Today, I'm very excited to share with you a demo of the Vitria via AI Ops product and platform. This demo is based on a 5G SA hybrid cloud-based mobile network, uh, which has approximately 20,000 transport network devices. All of these devices are generating a continuous stream of metrics, events, logs, and traces, which are being ingested and processed by via AI ops. There are a number of key capabilities that I would like to show you in the demo today. The first of those is multi-layer correlation. So multi-layer correlation refers to both horizontal correlation across the network and vertical correlation across the technology stack. And this is prim primarily used to reduce noise and to accurately detect uh, incidents, as well as assess the impact of those incidents, incidents and prioritize the incidents accordingly. Next, I would like to show you how we use machine learning and artificial intelligence within the product. Uh, we use a machine learning and artificial intelligence for a number of different uh, features and capabilities. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how we use it for automated network on top. Uh, network ontology discovery, as well as incident classification. Uh, and then the final thing I would like to show you is our flexible automation framework, which is used to drive actions for issue triage and uh, remediation. Within the application itself, or within the demo today, there are a number of different incidents classified. I'm gonna focus on one particular incident classification, which is an isolated a CSR. So a CSR or a cell site router is an L2, L3 device typically installed remotely at the cell site base station. And what it does is aggregates mobile data traffic from the cellular access network uh, and transports that traffic back to the service provider network. Our demo today is based on an ORAN architecture where you have multiple ORUs and the DU connected independently to the CSR. CSR is then backhauling that traffic to aggregation routers and to the core network. In an LTA, LTE or a 5G NSA network, you could have an RRU connected to a BBU, connected to the cell site router, and then backhauling that traffic to the network. Um, when a cell site router becomes isolated from the network, uh, it loses connectivity to the broader network infrastructure. This could be due to a number of reasons, for example, a power outage, physical damage, network failure, or environmental factors. And it can result in loss of service for end customers in the affected area. Uh, due to the loss of connectivity, the CSR itself is not able to report that it can no longer connect to the network. And therefore, CSR isolation is often not detected in a timely manner by traditional monitoring tools. In addition, uh, the potential customer impact of this issue is typically not available to network operations engineers for prioritization of that incident. And uh, there may be requirements to report these types of connectivity issues to the regulatory authority. Within the demo, we follow the, uh, this particular workflow. The first thing that we do is we ingest all of the metrics, logs, events, and traces from the network. And we use that information to automatically discover the network ont ontology. The network ontology being the network topology and the relationships between those devices in the network, uh, in, in the network topology. The second thing that we do Based on all of the adjacent nodes to the CSR reporting connectivities, we're able to detect that the CSR uh, is isolated. Um, the next thing that we do, based on a combination of policy and artificial intelligence and machine learning, we classify the incident and we determine the prescriptive action. One type of prescription action that we can implement is to trigger periodic polling to that CSR to continuously validate the connectivity status of uh, this, the CSR. And um, we then correlate 
all of the related symptoms and causes uh, together into a single smart ticket or smart incident. That smart incidents include all of the affected entities, the probable cause, the classification and the prescriptive actions, as well as all of the individual signals that went into generating that incident. Um, let me show you how that looks within the application itself. Um, so the first thing you will see is this is what we call the Incident Action Center. So that is the landing page for VIA AI Ops. Uh, in this example here, I have queried on today and we see a number of different incidents on the left-hand side. Those incidents are uh, classified as closed or open and open issues all have uh, different priorities as you can, can see. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to pick one incident that has been classified as an isolated uh, CSR. Once you look at the incident, there's a number of different pieces of information you can see, including the status of the incident. We can see that this incident was raised as an outage. We can see that the incident is act actively being worked on, which uh, means that there is an, still an open ticket related to this particular uh, incident. And we can also see that annotations have been added to this incident, which I will uh, show you uh, presently how that works. In addition, you can see information like the time that the incident was raised. You can see the duration of the incident. You can see when it was last updated uh, and so on. Uh, uh, the next pieces of information that you can see include the probable uh, root cause of the information. So this uh, uh, provides additional information for ops uh, to be able to drill down into the root cause of the problem. We then have the affected entities, uh, the entities that are affected by this incident, including additional uh, information or additional attributes like the role, the location, the RAM vendor in that location, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously all of this information is uh, configurable. The next piece of information you can see is the key correlations that cause that incident to uh, occur. Key correlations um, equate to the symptoms of that particular incident. Uh, we then have the detailed timeline and all of the various different signals that, uh, that, that are, are correlated into that incident, as well as all of the different actions and annotations, et cetera, that were added to the, to the incident. Uh, finally, then below, uh, we have the action summary, which captures all of the different actions that were taken for that particular incident. For the purpose of the demo, I am going to drill a little bit into the uh, into the the timeline for uh, the incident. So, within the timeline of the incident, what we can see is initially there was a temperature KPI uh, violation. So this means that the CSR was operating. Uh, outside of the optimal temperature for that particular uh, piece of equipment. And um, subsequently to that, what we see is a number of link failures. So these include link failures to the distributed unit, link failures to multiple different radio units, and link failures to the uh, precision time protocol uh, server, which is used to sync the time of that uh, CSR, obviously time syncing being very important uh, in a 5G uh, SA network and uh, core network and, and access uh, network. Um, upon seeing all of these link failure uh, signals, the incident is initially classified as a link down uh, issue and a ticket is raised in JIRA for that classification. classification. Uh, the next thing then that we start to see after all of these link failures occur uh, is we start to see that the uh, adjacent nodes start reporting BGP adjacency failures or BGP adjacency issues 
and ISIS adjacency failures. Um, this now indicates, because we understand the network ontology, that the, the CSR has become isolated from uh, the network. Uh, upon receiving this new information, the incident is reclassified as an isolated CSR uh, issue. The ticket is updated and a number of actions are taken, including uh, starting uh, or triggering the SNMP poll to that CSR to continuously validate the connectivity. And we can see that those SNMP polls are tracked over time and continue uh, to fail until the issue uh, is resolved. Uh, one other very important aspect of this particular example is that we also correlate in customer care tickets. So this is customers calling in and complaining about lack of service um, during this particular incident. And we can very quickly look at our trend analysis feature and see the escalation in the number of customer care, customer care calls for the duration of uh, the incident. Um, the, the other thing that we can do is we can look at our distribution analysis feature, which basically provides a distribution of all of the different uh, attributes that are associated with the care, care calls. And we can see that customers are reporting loss of data connection, loss of voice service, network coverage issues, et cetera. All of the types of issues that you would uh, expect uh, to see in this type of a, a situation. Uh, and another action that we're driving out of this particular incident is that upon the escalation from medium care call uh, priority to high care call priority, we uh, form an IVR integration to the IVR system to implement uh, IVR uh, deflection. One other capability I think it, that is important to mention is that leveraging a combination of generative AI and historical or generative AI based on historical incidents, we're able to determine the likely fix for this uh, particular problem. So you can see that the likely fix is reporting that this issue is most likely due to an overheating uh, uh, um, uh, overheating of the equipment and resolution of that particular issue, the overheating most probably caused by a fan or a power supply uh, issue, resolution of that particular uh, problem will or should resolve uh, the incident. And again, all of this information is available within the ticket uh, that's generated as a result of this incident, the, the, the JIRA ticket that's generated. Okay, so from there, uh, what we do is we track the state of all of these different signals until uh, the issue is resolved or the issue is reported as resolved within the information that's being generated by the network. At that point, we then clear the isolated CSR issue. And after a certain amount of time, we close that issue. We are also monitoring for the ticket uh, to be closed within the trouble ticketing uh, system. Okay. So, um, there are a number of different, I guess, capabilities that I demonstrated within uh, this particular demo. Uh, and I wanted, I guess, to reiterate some of the business value of those particular capabilities. So, for example, uh, horizontal correlation across the different network nodes. As you see, we've correlated multiple different pieces of uh, logs and events across the network, helps reduce noise through correlation of multiple signals and systems into a single smart incident. Often with traditional network monitoring tools, each signal would generate an individual incident and it would be up to the network operations engineer to manually correlate those together. Uh, second of all, uh, we're demonstrated vertical and cross-domain correlation. So this allows us to understand the 
impact through correlation of network faults with end customer experience. And we can see that the end customer experience in this demo, demo was illustrated by an escalation in the number of care calls. We also generated uh, automated or demonstrated automated topology and ontology discovery. So by learning the relationship between the network nodes and use, and then we're able to use that learned knowledge to detect isolated nodes in real time. As per in this example, we were able to detect an isolated CSR. Finally, uh, or sorry, and ultimately, uh, I demonstrated some via AI ops driven automated actions. So for example, periodic polling of isolated node to continuously determine node availability. Um, adds an extra uh, layer, I guess, of uh, validation of a particular issue. And these types of actions are configurable within uh, the product. Uh, finally, then we have our flex flexible automation framework. So we're able to leverage that flexible automation framework to classify incidents, to determine the, the probable root cause, and to drive automated uh, prescription actions, as you've seen uh, within the demo. So this is what I wanted to share from a demo uh, perspective today. Uh, for more information, please visit uh, vitria.com.